If you turn around, this is where things get really exciting. Look what's in there. What's up, legends? It is time to wake up the neighbors. This is always a moment of guilt. Check, okay. Boom, boom, boom. Here we go. Right, you wanna see how much of a nightmare it is to put this car in the lift from the outside. I'm gonna die from the fumes. I'll just close my window. That's quite a nice M5, look. M5 competition, very nice. Right, obviously we're daily driving the Ferrari now, but where are we going? We are going to a big car garage here, which I've been driving by the last few days and I've seen they've got some pretty cool cars in stock and they've got a lot of cars in stock. So even though this car isn't for sale, my R8 is, but this car isn't for sale. It is always interesting to go and see what's, uh, what's on sale at the moment, what there is uh, to be offered at the local dealerships. And seeing them like in the flesh is, is so much better. So being able to see what they have, because they have loads of different options, um, kind of what the market's doing at the moment, and also showing you guys, because uh, you know I've seen on Instagram and stuff messages that you guys enjoy the videos where we just go to a dealership and kind of explore. So that is the theme of today. And obviously, seeing us at the moment, this is the daily driver, we're taking this. Now, the first mission is always finding somewhere to park. Does this look like it'll do? All right, legends, so we've got a few options. I'm just gonna walk you through the cars that are here now, because there are some pretty cool, there are some very cool cars, actually. But uh, it's tricky to kind of gauge yourself because there's so many different options or so many different types, a lot of Porsches. This garage is called DPM here in Monaco. It's very, very cool. Now, we start here with a 488 Spider. Um, so not, not a piece to a normal 488. Uh, pretty easy to tell. The easiest way to tell is actually from the front. It doesn't have that huge kind of S duct at the front. Nice spec though, carbon inside. There's then also an R6, beautiful R6, which is like a dark, extremely metallic, I'm not sure if it will come off on camera, blue. Really nice. Not sure I'm a fan of the satin silver. That would be nice room black, I think. Anyway, moving on. These are kind of like the luxury cars. Uh, there's a Porsche Panamera Turbo here in black. This is very cool. This is an S-Class Coupe, AMG, but not any AMG. It's a 65 AMG. So look, V12 by Turbo. These have been since discontinued. So last generation, you'll never be able to see one of these. Very cool twin turbo V8. Well, by turbo V8. And um, no, I mean, these are awesome. You don't see them a lot. And they make actually a really cool sound. So if you straight pipe these, uh, they make an awesome sound. One of the easiest ways to tell also is through the exhaust uh, round back. Can you also see how close they park? It's unreal. Cars aren't touching though. Right, we go back from here. Oh, he's walking backwards. He's stressing, he's stressing. We've then got <laughs> this, which is a, a bit of a different change of vibe. However, very, very nice color. This is also a really cool color. This is a 992, um, so easiest way to tell this from the front is that the front hood is kind of much more squared off and through the lights, but 992 in a non-metallic, kind of really flat, uh, dark sea blue, really nice. I, I don't know what the color is called. Uh, I'm not sure I'd seen it before, but it's a very, very nice color. So this is, this is pretty awesome. And it's the first of many 992s, including this one, which is gray with black rims. And they've actually all got the sports exhaust. So you can tell it's a sports exhaust because it's two ovals rather than four small circles. Now I actually prefer the way the normal exhaust looks. Obviously prefer the way this sounds. So very cool. This is awesome because you don't see many of these. This is a Targa 992. And so they're kind of completely brand new. And honestly, I haven't seen that many, but this is, I think, such a sweet spot in, in the range because yes, it adds more weight, but you're not necessarily going to be tracking these. I think they look great. And I think they offer the practicality of a, and the um, comfort and the lack of sound and buffeting of a coupe, but yet you can take the roof off when you want. So love a good Targa. Bit of an odd interior choice. It's like, I don't even know how you describe it. It's a mix of green and blue, um, but yeah. And then 
Rolls Royce Dawn, which has a little like uh, packaging on it. I don't know if someone's bought that late Christmas present to themselves. These are really cool. So we got a range, but then this is more interesting, I think. This is an RS Q8. And the reason these have made a lot of noise is because they're effectively like a mini Urus. So same platform, same engine, same gearbox, um, same kind of look, but basically half the price. Still, because Uruses are actually holding their value really well because they're in such high demand, um, they're, they're really expensive even on the second-hand market. So this is really nice. Obviously, the maintenance cost, anything from just um, your, your yearly service or anything like that, because it's an Audi, will be a lot cheaper. So really, really cool to see this. And it's got carbon all over, red stitching inside. Awesome, awesome looking car. Speaking of awesome looking cars, this is your personal favorite, right? Porsche 911 Turbo S, 992, obviously, but in a very, very simple yet very classy spec. Completely tinted rear window. We've made videos actually on uh, this car, driving one of these cars, so that will be linked around. But it's also got these really nice rims. Um, which are inspired by what used to be on the 911 exclusive series, I think, which was a really rare, really limited uh, version of the 991 Turbo S. But now those rims have ended up on, on, on the 992, and I think they look really good. Black interior, super simple, but it works really well. Not sure about these, like, in terms of the value of them. I think this is probably my favorite car here. But first of all, it's about 90,000 euros more than the Scuderia. Um, and also, I just think like turbos, the market of turbos have a tendency to depreciate all of a sudden, and the 992s haven't hit that yet. So I think now, even though it's a beautiful car, great car, you can use it like in any circumstance. Um, I feel like they're gonna take a hit at some point. Unlike this, which is a 991.2 Speedster, which is effectively like a convertible 911 Touring, uh, GT3 Touring, which is it's so sick. I mean, it's so cool. You don't get rear seats in this um, because you've got this double bubble roof, which is traditional from the Speedster. But uh, limited and manual gearbox. It's also got the carbon ceramics, as you can tell, little clue. Uh, every time you see yellow brake calipers on a Porsche, that usually indicates that it has carbon ceramics. Carbon fiber everywhere. 918 carbon seats, red stitching. This is really, really nice. They even have on these, the Porsche logo is a sticker and not an actual logo just to save weight, which is kind of cool. But I think he's still on the phone, yeah. If you turn around, this is where things get really exciting. Look what's in there. I mean, obviously, the kind of looking at the market for ourselves part ends as soon as we go through that door because we were already above budget in that room. But when we get in that room, we're completely over budget. But there's a man who's on the phone inside I don't want to wait for him to be off the phone so we don't disturb him while filming. But uh, there's a Bugatti here, and that's always very exciting. It's all kicking off, isn't it? Bugatti Chiron. It's got 1,500 horsepower, W16. And actually, you know the thing is like with, with the, the Chiron and the Veyron, you don't see many, I haven't seen many. And I think they look amazing in photos. But when you see them in the flesh, there's just something about them, which is, they're just impressive. Like there's such a presence with them. This one is beautiful, actually. Really strong spec. I think this is Bugatti Blue. I'm, I may be mistaken, but it, it looks a lot like Bugatti Blue and it's a beautiful color. It's got quite a lot of depth to it when you see it um, for real. And this car has quite a few options. And when a Bugatti has options, it's just in a different league to any other car. So for example, it's got carbon up here, really dark, which probably won't come off on camera. Carbon down here as well, carbon in the headlights. Um, this is a Chiron, a normal Chiron, if you can say that. Basically, it's not a Chiron Sport. One of the ways you can tell that is it's only got one windscreen, uh, it's got two windscreen wipers, sorry. Whereas the Chiron Sport only has one to save weight. I'm not sure how much weight that's really saving, but it's an easy way to tell from the front if it's a Chiron Sport or not. And at the back, you have quad exhaust on the Sport and dual on the normal one. Um, so yeah, beautiful 
here at the front. It's got options here as well, so the painted rims. For example, I think I once saw a price list. Um, now, don't quote me on this because I don't have it you know, confirmed, but where blue or Bugatti blue brake calipers was a 36,000 euro option. This has them, and that just puts in context. So if the blue brake caliper was 36 grand, imagine what the carbon front splitter and everything is. That brings us swiftly onto carbon wing mirrors, and then the rear three quarter being fully carbon fiber, which again, to put into context, having fully exposed carbon fiber, I think was around 350,000 euros. And the rear three quarter is around 200,000. So, oh, look, GT3 RS, very nice. Very nice. Um, so this whole section in Carmen costs more than my Scuderia, which is outside. And all of the options put together, because for example, it's got like carbon fiber, matte carbon fiber steering wheel. Um, it's got paint down this center line down here. That will be another option. Every option on this car put together probably cost as much as this Porsche Turbo S next to us and my Scuderia put together, just to put that in context. You can see the W16 back there. Um, which looks great. You can also get where it's um, matte gray. You can have that painted in body color, which they didn't opt for here. But the carbon continues all the way down, even to the license plate holder and around the parking sensors. There is all carbon fiber. You can see a bit of PPF going along there. <coughs> Dual exhaust, as I mentioned, and the, the really well known now, um, massive LED strip, which goes across the whole back of the car which took some getting used to when it came out, people weren't, weren't too sure. This is obviously the big rear wing, um, hydraulic wing, which just comes up, uh, can be used as an air brake as well. And yeah, and this, this line right here, this kind of like C, that gets continued inside. There's like a light, an LED strip inside, which continues that C design and looks really cool and kind of separates the driver from the passenger. And then there's that matte carbon fiber steering wheel. Obviously blue stitching, blue leather, which all of these things that I'm you know, saying right now probably cost an absolute fortune. But what an animal. I mean, so, so cool to see one. This one is actually, it's got 3,000 kilometers, it's three years old, and it's for sale for 2,950,000 euros. So effectively 3 million euros for a three-year-old, 3,000 kilometer Bugatti Chiron, which is pretty nuts. And very cool that they've got one for sale here. I mean, it gave us a title and a thumbnail, didn't it? <laughs> that was convenient. But then we have, next to that, another Porsche Turbo S, convertible this time, this really nice cray color. It's actually, one of my favorite things about this one is it's got um, the uh, extended kind of contrast stitching pack. So white stitching on the seats, but look at the thick stick stitching on the steering wheel. It looks really nice. So that, this is really cool. It's also got those kind of exclusive series uh, center locking rims, which look awesome. We've got an RS4 here. Quite an easy way to tell the RS4 is these little vents on the front in, a, in this blue, which to be honest with you, I'm not a massive fan of on this car. I think it's a nice color, but not necessarily on this car. It shows how, how light the blue is on the Bugatti when you stand here and you kind of compare the two. And then another uh, 992, this time in yellow. This has some pretty funky options if you go on the other side, like all of the interior trim finished in yellow and an Alcantara steering wheel. Personally, I think it looks pretty, pretty horrible <laughs> <laughs> on the inside, but uh, it's, a, I mean, it's a great car, but just not my personal taste. And then uh, equally not a fan of this spec, this is a hybrid Cayenne Coupe. White with beige it is not a thing, I don't think. I mean, is that a thing? I don't like it. Do you like it? I don't know. You don't know? No, oh. not sure. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, to be honest, I was kind of hoping we would see an Aventador here. I'm, I've been obsessively looking at Aventadors for a little while. Not that I'm saying I'm gonna replace the Scud with an Aventador, but I did just wanna see one in the flesh, like kind of get a feel for it, like first gen Aventador or 991 first gen GT3 RS. Those are the two cars that I don't know why are just stuck in my head right now. I was hoping to see some here. So whilst they have a ton of really cool cars, uh, they didn't have those. So we're gonna need to go to another garage and continue hunting for some of those to look around. But very cool that we came across this. Awesome that they've got it for sale. It's not often that you come to a dealership and there's a Chiron for sale. So yeah, oh, we're getting blocked in, aren't we? Yep. Right, we're gonna need to head back, do some work, <laughs> try and 
one day be aspire to this. The crazy thing about this, right, is this is a massively expensive car that pretty much anyone will work their whole life to one day, you know, be able to hopefully afford one of these. And um, I mean, this is out of my budget for now, but they are, it is awesome. But when you realize like the scale of when you move on to this, like this is already ludicrous. And such a small percentage of people even are lucky enough to see one of these. But then when you consider that this costs less than the options on this, it puts into context just how nuts the Bugatti Chiron is. 500 being made, um, which when you think 500 people owning one of these, that's quite a big number as well. Anywho, hope you enjoyed this video. Always enjoy them. I mean, super simple, just a little walk around, but it's cool to see, you know, Monaco is, uh, you know, a special place for supercars. So coming to the dealership here, seeing what the clientele likes here, seeing what's for offer is always interesting. And it's good to see that, you know, there's new cars, the market is still working despite the times the, the high-end supercar market seems to still be kind of uh, chuckling along, so that's really good to see. But hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you're all doing well, staying safe. And uh, if you haven't already, why don't you subscribe to this video? And if you want to see more of these, um, you will be coming back with more soon. Hopefully, we'll potentially find even maybe a potential one day down the line replacement for the Ferrari or the R8 or something like that. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys very soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>